Father, we just want to thank you for the gift of life and health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us, Lord, to wake up this morning and to face the challenges of everyday living in Nigeria. Thank you for the Dennis Memorial Grammar School. It's just like the mother that brought us forth when we were nurtured and brought up many years back. Thank you, Lord, that it, is, it has become a rallying point for all of us. Thank you for our guests you have brought from far and near. Brought them here to be O Lord, that you preside over everything we will do here today. We ask for the benefit of your wisdom, your counsel, your direction, and your understanding. We pray, O Lord, that at the end of our stay here, we will leave this place certain and assured of your presence with us. And your blessings will go with us. Thank you for the chairman of the day. Grant him the wisdom and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The school and the engram we sing to you. Beautiful 
is magnanimous, is always grateful for little beggars, and he renders service excellently well. Please put your hands together for them, brother. And then, when you come to the service sector, wherever you see any Dengra mic operating, just like the DMDS there, he dares to make great sacrifice. DMGS. Dare to make great sacrifice. That is what we represent. That is why we have organized this lecture. And you see our elders coming here to support what the students are doing because of the love we have for this our alma mater. Because we want to render this service, because we want to make positive impact in the lives of our upcoming youths. Today, I don't think I should be the one doing a lot of talking here. It's my mission or my responsibility here is to assure you that by the time you finish this lecture, if you, if you are able to listen attentively and take notes down, you will become a very changed person. You will become a more informed person. Archbishop Preston at Hosa said, if you are not informed, you are deformed. If you are not informed, you are deformed. Which means, it is an incumbent thing upon those who are informed, like Professor here, to educate and inform we that are not informed by prof. I, I, I say so, sir. <laughs> Having been privileged to be at the House of Assembly between 2007 and 2011, representing on the Jam North where DMJS is situated, I feel that it is important that those of us who were not, don't mind now, use the word privileged, to attend DMJS, to see something that is unique about them grammites. There is no sector in life that you don't see them grandmas being at the top. There is no sector. In fact, when I came in here, I was made to understand that the SUG president or somebody in the SUG is a them Am I correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the students are not talking. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> Now, in my days in the University of Benin, I remember each time we had issues, financial, moral, social, academic, we ran to older old boys, and they were always willing. There is always a willingness to help. And each time I just go back, something could happen. That is the kind of thing you see among the Ramites. Uh, some people feel that's not the concord at DMJS. In my house, anytime I mention DMJS, my wife, at the lawyer, <laughs> because someone on one or anything that will stop me from attending anything DMJS. And so our wives are incorporated in the, in the, the uh, DMJS. Am I correct, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. They are old girls. They are old girls. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Please. As you listen, there are something about students that I've noticed. The quest for knowledge, the Bonan has the other. The quest for knowledge. I am here with my, this, this small paper you see is very important to me. I use it often. I'm aging big. I must sit down here, listen attentively, and write down things. The reason. I am able to see a, a, a camera, take a microphone and talk without preparation is because of this kind of lectures I had when I was in school. I want to encourage you, or oh, anyone else Pentecost that will go for the if you are even on a see which you are gonna pair. If you are must have been joking and talk with each other one appear of Louisiana school environment. And this school environment for somebody put doctor of letters, if you want them what they were well or someone on the chat, put doctor Nam their city way. So, I expect that students here, even if you are not up to 1 million, even if you are not up to 200, you should have your paper, you have your pen, and listen attentively and take down notes. This 
kind of thing in a Kobe Advantage in a Lagos business school, who are 150,000, 250,000, to have somebody like Paul, to have somebody like Dr. These seasoned intellectuals educate you. And a whole one, I need a training. The House of Assembly members, current House of Assembly members, are just coming from a trip where they're training. It will go back all professors, but they pay money. But what you are going to receive today is free OC, free of charge. So it is a rare privilege and you should make the best out of it. Are we ready to do that? Yes. You know, the smiles on your face. So you should please put a smile on your face, a little bit of a smile on your face. Eh? Um, um, I was listening to one music, I said no, the robuch. What? The robuch. And I now discovered that uh, don't just your soul, but see that Doro means somebody who is doing well. I mean, the best of everything, the best record level, the best this, the best that, the best that. And we are sitting here, Doro, you man, I bet don't just you want to take the rap in the DMJs. DR, or well, we had it. Oh, now I permission. We know. I went here the privilege to use that deal. So we are talking about Toro DMGS. So when you are writing what you came here to do, the first thing you write is DMGS. The second one is Toro DMGS. The first school in Eastern Nigeria and West Africa in the whole world. Please put your hands together for them. So without taking much time, uh, let me Let me go to the next item on the agenda, which is the uh, breaking of polar north. Sir, sir, no one to issue. Please assist in doing this. Maka, isi mo ina yan isi mo man ongori pe ya in. So, ukuluro mboka. Ada tuwa kanya na boat. Also, also, House of Assembly kana tuwa na boat. Onyo mna moya solia. Bori bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Stand on the existing protocol. Um, the MC, please. Can you have me? Just like you rightly called me up. Um, incidentally, I'm a son of the soil. Several capacity. Just capacity.
If I continue as a staff advisor, I will ensure that these things are really better organized. Um, somehow, because of uh, the busy schedule of staff and even the students, we hardly have time to sit down and plan some of these things. I thank the chairman who came all the way from Onisha to be here. And even the chairman of uh, Anisha branch, it's a big sacrifice for which we know DMGs and engramites. Thank you very much for making this possible in spite of the initial hiccups and challenges. Um, the chairman had said it all. The essence of this interaction is so that we can learn from the wisdom that comes with age and scholarship. It is therefore my candid advice that you all pay attention. This knowledge, this wisdom, these are the people who will make you grow. Commend about this gathering behind putting these things together. That's where I really top my heart for the students. That it is an opportunity that comes once in a very long while. And so I will plead that we all give them your on the day of the public meeting, youth education and um, nation building on July 10, 2014. Um, the Deputy Governor, His Excellency, Dr. Kemo Keke, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Joseph Ahaneku, the Vice Chancellor Emeritus, Professor Ilochi Okafo. The distinguished guest of honor, who is also our the chairman of the occasion, Honorable C. E. Guato, the national vice, first vice president of Cobra. So he's not here, but he told me he's coming. Dr. Eric and also the president of the Baoka branch, Sao Keobi, the SCG president, the student representative councils that are here, the student judiciary council. The faculty and departmental presidents, the entire student of this great institution, fellow head boys, seniors, and ladies. I'm so honored and grateful to witness your powerful presence in this occasion. Today is indeed a significant and a remarkable day in the history of Dubai Unison. This current, so we haven't had such current before in this school, organized by the student wing of. Baba. So I must say that I'm, I'm so glad to see all of you here. Today is indeed a day that is second to none in our struggle for a hopeful and a healthy future. What an excellent guardian that embodied all the great excellence of progress and pioneers of praise for a just and free society. Your peaceful presence is indeed blessed by Divine Almighty and acknowledged by these great minds that struggle to create a meaningful future for themselves. I must tell you, my seniors, my daddies, we are really the spirit to hear from you, so that we can amend our way. Your peaceful presence is indeed blessed by divine almighty and acknowledged by these great minds that struggle to create a meaningful future for themselves. The youths are like a germinating seed that is uncertain about the fertility of the soil and the purpose of being grown, but strangeness of life is mutual behind our projects. Education among the youth is a basic necessity that cannot be undermined. Yet, I must tell you that youth remain the greatest asset of the country, of the nation. Without them, I don't know what the nation will be like. Despite the that in Nigeria we're experiencing a lot of um, here and there. 
But we still, I still tell you that if we are properly, if we educate the youth very well, give them everything they need. I think for a, youth, for a nation to grow, youth must grow. We, the youth, have the strength to right the young wrongs in society. But without proper knowledge, we can't possess the wisdom to identify them. Our call is a call for support, a call for an encouragement, a call for a malicious attention, a call for an effective advice, and a call to secure a better future for the youth. Only your presence and your decision of following this invitation is a symbolic reflection of your willingness to support a dream that tends to explore the wider horizon. May God bless you all. Your contributions will indeed promote prosperity. Sharing this moment with you is one of the defining reasons for us to determine, to be determined in our struggle for a better future and believe in a better dream. Thank you all. Lots of fear. Mr. President, I respect you and your suit, like I said before. If you see the original, I believe you're still going to like it. I know this president back in the days. But now, he now looks like a prof. Before, this guy used to amend everything. Everything he amend. Men's shirt, boxers, simply. Everything. That time, if you go to his contacts, you'll be seeing things like Chikozi or Chanja, men market. Adobe Azundo. Amakob. Open Nano Jacket. But now, if you go to his contacts, you can now see wonderful contacts like Bruce's name there. You see wonderful contacts. Kulo Jonathan. To my utmost dismay, I saw. Ali Kodangote. Now I rush the contact. Tien a phone. Waiting I see and I switch the president on my phone. I wait. I'm a now for any many go to change here. Now so for help, but enter the mod. Drop for junction, make I buy the note. One day walk up as very short. If you are not up one day, walk up as too very short. If you are you one day up one day short. I look and I want some assault because I can't come the shoot at a pot. I don't know where my thing start like robot. So tell the thing got the plan to come out. As a guy man, I give and support because I don't want you any report. At that time, my body not the hot. I saw I carry the girl, enter the same pot. I say, baby, do you care for mouth? I say, mom, no start on your girl. I know not say this girl in her love. What will betray me one day? Like, that's a scary. I don't care. <laughs> I have a small story to tell, a story to hear, a story that I believe that will sell. But before that, Mr. President, can you please work on someone who's going to read the citation of my wonderful guest lecturer here? Please, Mr. President, work on that, please, fast. I recognize you. You're highly welcome. Shoe Brown, Teeth Brown. Are you related to Chris Brown? Why the Brown Brown? Well, as a Almost what is it? Please, Chitos, can you guys be careful? On a tapa. On a tapa. Please, I have a small story to tell, a, small, a story to hear, a story that I believe that will tell. Huh? You know, I don't know where you celebrated your Easter, but I think I did my own in one village called Nanka. You? Another place, I just want girl where they answer, Maka. If you see this girl, this girl is as fat as a tanker. But still, she looked really beautiful, just like a Jugo Bianca. Now I rush and say, baby, in my name, Maka. This girl not even talk to me. She come to know her waka. Now I rush and say, Ne, Anna Maka. Why are you behaving like somebody who comes from adoration of Maka? This girl tell me that, saying to me, where they be like when you say Maka. Or don't I know that she's the daughter of Professor B.C. Boka? Now I say Boka. Oh, now that's going to invite to This girl said yes. I just came back from America. And she came to Nanka to see her friend Cheka, who is a banker. 
This guy, talk to me, finish and bring me, let me walk out. Come the shake out, more back out. Now me, I look this thing more back out. Just like a fake, we see my The next morning, I beg, enter a car. Make a buy all this fancy nigga. We will make me fine like Van Victor. One day, to my greatest surprise, I see the same Amaka where she they sell her great cafe coca. We will do the chair work again. Hachi Willem. Hachi Willem. Her children to become some people, something in society. 
she kept telling them, um, um, that is in American language, you will be something. And, but Ben grew up in this background. Two things stood against him. The first one was that he had a violent temper. And young people can have violent temper. He argued with his best friend. And in the argument, he took a flake knife. You know these American flake knives? You just depress and the blade will shoot out. And he stabbed his, his uh, friend. And the blow landed on the belt, the metallic bo uh, buckle of the belt. And the knife snapped into two. It dawned on him that had it not been for this metallic bo uh, buckle, he would have killed his friend. He was frightened. He dropped it and ran home. Locked himself up in the toilet. And prayed a prayer. He said, God, help me. Deliver me. I can't help myself. He was so sad. He slept off in the, in, the, in the toilet. When he woke up, he came out. And his life began to take a turn for the better. There was a second problem. He was regarded as a dunce in the school. And he had to pass chemistry very well if he was to be a doctor. His mother kept telling him, Ben, you must be a doctor. You must be a doctor. How could he be a doctor if he could not pass chemistry? There was one critical exam that he had to face. And he didn't know what to do. He again went back to God and said, God, help me. Help me to do better. And he slept. In the night as he slept, he saw himself in the chemistry auditorium. And the lecturer walked in and started writing chemical equations in chemistry and balancing them on the board. And he wrote and wrote and wrote Then he woke up. When he woke up, he tried to remember what he saw. When he entered the exam hall, it was a divine expo. It was the questions that came out in the exam that came there. He answered it. And when the result came out, he had 95%. He was qualified to go to medical school. He graduated. And today, Dr. Ben Carson is a top-notch pediatric neurosurgeon one of the best in the whole world. In fact, anywhere you hear the story of the separation of Siamese twins, either a student of Ben Carson was there, or Ben Carson himself was there. He was the person who initiated work in that area. He wrote the story of his life in a book titled Gifted Hands. Why did I start with that story? Because the story of Ben Carson can be the story of any young man here and any young woman. You can turn around from, the, if the, somebody said, if the world throws a lemon to you, make a lemonade. You see the, 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 the disabilities he inherited and turning them to something that was great and glorious. Young people represent the strength, the excellency of dignity and power the first fruits of our manly strength and vigor. They are the hope of every nation. You know, I usually say that there are four things that are very good about being young. When you're young, four things stand you out. The beauty, the strength, the creativity, and the resilience. There are four things that young people have that when we, get, when we are becoming old, we envy you for that. When you see an old woman with almost all the teeth gone, wrinkles all over the place, you may tend to forget that she used to be a very young, beautiful queen. That's what it is like. When you're young, the muscles are firm, very attractive, very fine. You touch yourself up and you can go for a competition. Then you have the, 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 the strength. Somebody, I remember my principal in those days, Mr. Gazi used to say that when you're young, you can chew a stone and your system will digest it. But if you get older, bite some sand, you will lose your teeth. And so many things will go wrong. So, when you're young, so much is going for you. Very creative. You can make something out of nothing. You are very resilient. No matter what happens to you, you bounce back. But there are some things I want you to note about being young. 
Generally, young people like to live on the fast lane, isn't it? If you're driving along and somebody overtakes you at a tremendous speed, and by the time you reach the next turn, he has slowed down and chatted with his friend. And you pass again, he accelerates again. That's the way they operate. Ooh, as if a devil is chasing him. Then suddenly he will slow down. And you wonder, what was he running after? Young people like the latest, the most sophisticated, the modern. They don't like, this thing is antiquated, they are born with that. They don't like routine things. Young people prefer fun to work. So if you want him to work, make the work to look like fun. And he will walk and walk and walk. They prefer now, now, now to later. They don't like postponing anything. One thing they don't remember is that what we are today is the result of the choices we made yesterday. So they just said, do it now, now, now. And then, of course, there's a problem that young people have with their peers. A small boy was asked in uh, Sunday school, would you like to go to heaven? He said, well, he's not too sure. He said, why? He said, because a lot of his friends will be in hell, and he prefers to be where his friends are. <laughs> peers mean a lot. At times, just what their mates are doing. And then, of course, one thing young people lack, patience and humility. They lack it so much. I usually say that there are three tests to know whether you are growing up. Number one is whether you have learned to sacrifice self and put others ahead of you. If you learn that, you are maturing. Number two is if you come to the point where you stop and you consider the consequences of your actions before you take, undertake them, then you are maturing. Third one, if you begin to be patient with your opponents and humble before your fellows, you are truly a mature man. Whichever way we look at it, I want to say that the greatest investment any country can make is to invest on the young people. We talk about it and we don't do it. Everywhere we say the youth are the future of tomorrow. One young man said, when we were young, they told us we are the future leaders. And then we have become old now. And the people who told us that thing are still monopolizing leadership till today. They have refused to give way. So when are we going to lead? Upon these ones, and many times, and I'm very much aware of it because I'm getting on in age. I'm getting closer to my retirement. And I look back, I say, who will replace me? One day I went to the Former Vice Chancellor. I told him, I said, God has helped me in my teaching career as a lecturer. I am eyeing retirement. I want you to recruit a graduate assistant in accounting, somebody who made a first class. Let us see whether we can pass on something to the next generation. So that after we are gone, there will be people who will do even better than we have done. So, we deeply appreciate your position. Let me even get, get go biblical. Among the Jews, you know the story they often tell about one Jewish young boy. He was only a shepherd. And the day they came to anoint a king in his father's house, nobody remembered him. Is it not him? They brought all the sons, the ones that were tall, manly, handsome, fine. Nobody thought of him. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Ah, the prophet said, have they finished? Hmm, almost. The one in the field is inconsequential. When they look take down, the prophet said, go and get him. We will not sit until he comes. And immediately he came in, small boy, with sweat and uh, cattle dung all over him. And immediately he came in. The spirit of God said to Samuel, stand up. You are before royalty. Nobody sits until that one is anointed king over Israel. And they stood up. And David became king. He made many, many, many mistakes. With women. With uh, power. With uh, all sorts of things. But no other king is more honored in the history of the Jews than the man David. And he came in a young man. 
Why I'm saying why am I saying this? I want the youth to see their potentials. To know what God has invested you with. To know that the world is at your feet. I want you to know that your future can be what you want to make of it. If you are faltering, look for help from God. God's specialty is to prepare young people to take over and run this world. That's the way he made it. Permit me to tell another story before I go into education. This one had a dream. A great dream. At the age of 17, he dreamt a dream. And it was a funny dream. He was one of the youngest in the family, and all the family members bowed in the dream, bowing to him. Uh -uh. His brother said, eh, oh, we are bowing to you. By the time we finish with you, we know who you will bow to. So when they were still smarting, he had another worse one. Father, mother, and the brothers. And they got even angrier. But at 17, Joseph dreamt a dream. At 30, he was prime minister of Egypt. At 39, he saw every dream he dreamt come to pass. 22 years. And I have a word for the young people. Your dreams can come to pass. You can find a realization of your dreams. If I, right, right now, there's a book I'm reading written by a man from my town, a pharmacist, uh, some of some people know him, Nero's Pharmacy, uh, Polika Abemenike. And he tells the story of how he started from nothing. All he had was an equivalent of 300 Naira then, and a lot of ideas in his head. Today he has built a large financial empire. And people go to him, he distributes money in millions. What we are saying is that you hold in your hands what can make you great and make you remarkable. You can go from being just a mere footnote on the pages of history to becoming a trailblazer and the moving spirit of your generation. Now, having said that, let me spend a little time and say just a few words about, because we are talking about nation building. Nigeria is in trouble. Hello? Nigeria is in a trouble. If you don't know it, then you are both blind and uh, daft. Because look around you. Look around what is happening in the north. Areas we thought, the other day when I heard that there was a bomb at uh, Owele, I got frightened. I said, oh, go away. It means that our churches are not safe. You go to church and you are you, 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 you milling over thousands all over the place. Can you imagine what one bomb will do there? We look, and we, how did we come to this situation? Here is a nation wealthy. Here is a nation overflowing with abundance. We have the best human resources in the whole world. Think of it. Egalitarian, hardworking, disciplined, knowledgeable. I met a librarian, some, a man from Liberia some years ago. And he told me at the school in the US and that there were two groups of people they were afraid of meeting in school. Nigerians and Indians. That those people can read. And they were afraid of Nigerians. We have always been the best wherever we've gone to. Move a Nigerian to uh, uh, um, Eskimo land. He will be number one there. That's the way God has uh, helped us. Look at our land. There's no earthquake. There's no tsunami. There's no erosion. I mean, uh, apart from erosion. There's no volcanic eruption. All the things that God has endowed us with. My in-law, who is marrying somebody from Denmark, told me that she, she discovered that Nigeria has the best sunset. When the sun is setting, if you look at the... And they said, just admiring the sunset, she had to travel to Denmark to realize that she was missing something in Nigeria. Yet, Nigeria is rated number 14 in the list of failed states globally. What is a failed state? One that is unable to perform its duties on several levels, with violence and internal war as the order of the day, persistent and massive erosion in standards of living, unpardonable decay 
in the infrastructure of ordinary life and with the greed of the rulers overwhelming their responsibility to improve the welfare of the citizenry. That's the definition of a failed state. And that's where Nigeria is. The late uh, literature guru, Professor Chino Achebe, said, Nigeria's problem is, I said, the trouble with Nigeria is simply a failure of leadership. The climate is good. The people are good. The terrain is good. The problem is simply one of leadership, the problem of leadership. World Bank did an, uh, expo an, expo an exposition the other time and said recently, and said between independence and today, Nigerian politicians have stolen over $400 billion from the Nigerian coffers. That's what politicians, chairman uh, is from and <laughs> he said, politicians have stolen over $400 billion from the coffers of Nigeria. And he said, this amount is approximately the GDP of Norway and Sweden put together. In other words, Nigeria's corrupt ruling class stole the equivalent of an entire economy of a European country in just four decades. I could go on and on. What of Nigeria's Human Development Index? What is it like? Have you realized that the poverty rate is rising steeply in Nigeria in spite of the wealth of the nation? These are the problems that are facing us. Let me quote another man. A man who was in government for many years at the federal level. He said, and I quote, what we have in Nigeria is a legacy of brigandage and infamy. We are corrupt politicians with plenty of money and very low IQ. Play games with the fate of a nation. He went on and I quote, we have surrendered the bulk of our political space to the dishonorable, the incompetent, and worse, to the criminally minded. This is the basic problem of Nigeria. The brightest Nigerians are either abroad or at home in academia, in the military, or the private sector. This is an undeniable fact. The dregs of our society dominates the politics and have created a negative image that makes talented people spawn helping the country, unquote. I'm putting error five, the accidental public servant. So what are we saying? I tried some years ago to do a picture of the average Nigerian politician. Again, I observed that it is not everybody who is like this. But the average Nigerian politician is impatient with due process and the rule of law. He's supposed to uphold the constitution. At times, he's even ignorant of what the constitution says. He's a master of double speak. Dishonest, not trustworthy, does not believe in the truth. He has many cards he plays. Depending on the needs of the moment, he could play the ethnic card and I'm being persecuted because I'm only able. Meanwhile, on a part of my, he could play the religious card. Ah, it's because I'm a Christian, not a Muslim. He could play the gender card. I'm being oppressed because I'm a woman. He could play the violence card. He can also play the rent a crowd card. He may not have up to 10% supporters in the town, but he can raise 1 million people in a, protest, in a, in a rally. <laughs> They'll be telling him, okay, go. <laughs> That's the Nigerian politician. He's a willy schemer who wants to reap where he has not sown. He has no qualms about converting the pains of others into his own gains. He will gladly serve his masters, scorpion, instead of fish. And he retains a large appetite for power and position. He knows that time heals all political wounds. And he knows that Nigerians are very forgetful. So he will wait for Nigerians to forget. He will exploit the weak and the defenseless. He never retires. Nigerian politicians never retire. His son will meet him in politics. His great-grandson will meet him there. 
I, I see some of them on telly. Is there an ad at that Potago? If you know, okay, this man should be at home, covered up, you know, resting in the cold. He's on the campaign trail. He, he has learned that there's money in politics. In some, the average Nigerian politi politician is unpredictable, unreliable, undependable. He defies any logical analysis and he does not conform to a normal curve in his ways and attitudes. Given this situation, what do we expect of young people? Why did I paint this picture? Because it is to the youths of our nation that we are turning to see whether we can get a brand new national leader who will define the direction for our nation in the days ahead. And one of the tools we have for shaping the next generation is education. Education is a great tool for in every nation for redirecting the standards and values of the people. Plato, the great philosopher, saw education as the initial acquisition of virtue by the child when the feelings of pleasure and affection, pain and hatred that well up in his soul are channeled in the right direction. The word education is actually derived from the Latin word educare, which means to draw out, to lead out, and to form or train. In other words, the task of the educator is to draw out that which is already embedded in the pupil. I'm saying this because I just came back from a, a leadership training abroad. And one of the things that struck me, I had such a training again last year. I attended one last year in the US. And uh, about two weeks ago, I was at another training in Europe. And one thing struck me, the way these people teach is not the way we teach. Somebody comes to deliver a lecture. He doesn't tell us any new thing. He draws out from us. He said, okay, I'm going to teach you on leadership. Can anybody tell me any leader in your group? We're in about four groups. So each group, meet and tell me one leader you know that you have worked with and you, you, you think highly of. We met in our group and selected one, the other group. He said, okay, the next question, what was the achievement of this leader? We started providing the answers. What were his features, his characteristics? We started providing it. By the time we finished, we had done a wonderful exposition. But the man just drew out from us what we already knew. And I began to say, isn't this the distinct factor in the teaching of the white man that makes him different? I'm going to talk about on it before I round up. Because I'm going to talk about Japan. What makes Japan different? What makes US different? What makes Germany different? What is the secret of the educational system? Can't we tap from these things and raise young people that will transform our society in the days ahead? Now, let me say quickly that a good educational system must develop forward-looking options for all students. A number of things. Develop forward-looking options with a view to raising individuals who can work collaboratively with others, think critically and creatively, and solve complex problems. Think of it. The education we are receiving, the education you are receiving, the education you are building for yourself, is it helping you to look forward, to collaborate with others, to think critically and creatively, to solve complex problems. Every student has his strength. Again, I'm going to touch on it later. Somebody said that every student is intelligent. Every individual is intelligent. It's only a matter of finding how you can reach that student best. There are some. If you put the lesson in musical tones, he will catch it. Where is that MC? If you put anything in a rapping form, 
Yeah, he will beat you to it. There are people who learn that way. You know, when we were, when we were in uh, primary school in those days, we were used to use it. You remember how we used to dim I? It's M-T-A-T-L-M I-O-N, dictation. And you never can forget the spelling of dictation. <laughs> because they put it to song. The, the rivers of Africa, Nile, Niger, Senegal, Congo, Orange, Limpo, Zambes. If you ask me in the example, I'll quietly sing the song to myself and then write the answer. So, you, every student is intelligent. It's just a matter of finding the, 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 the point at which you will zero in and connect with the potentials of that student. Every academic system, every educational system must, among other things, help the student to develop self-knowledge. Develop yourself. Secondly, enable you identify your potential and facilitate your achievement of optimal development. And thirdly, equip you for life and civic responsibility. Let me say that the things that God has put in us, there's no way you can begin to fathom it. Somebody said that we live and die without exploiting up to 10% of the capacity of our brains. Nobody. That's why they say that the greatest treasure based on earth is where? The graveyard. A lot of songs that were never composed buried in the graveyard. A lot of papers that were never written buried in the graveyard. A lot of theories and principles that were never enunciated buried in the graveyard. A lot of ideas that could have transformed the world. Nobody pursued them. Buried in the graveyard. You have a potential. And all we are saying is that we need an educational system that will draw out that potential. And turn this system around. I have read about elsewhere about what they call entrepreneurial university. Incidentally, that was one of the things I thought we needed here. I said we need. I, I, I when I was the, uh, uh, director Chico Cole is set up for entrepreneurial study. We brought a man from abroad to come and help us do some work. As we drove in, he saw road work. He said, Ah, you people are building roads. I said, Yes. I hope it is your students who are building the roads. I said, No. It's contract work. He said, Then you have failed it. He said, I don't you have engineering students here? I said, We have. Then use them. Even if you give it to a contractor, insist that he will use your students so that they will learn the skills. Say so you build houses, and you have civil engineering students, and you have building technology students, why don't you use them? Look at even water, other things. You have the resources. One thing about university is that every area of human endeavor is represented here. Whether it's engineering, or medicine, or uh, teaching, or accounting, or finance, they're all here. I said, when you want to set up an entrepreneurial university, tap internally these resources. Encourage them. Pay them what you pay outside. Of. In fact, if you, if you get uh, a department and pay them uh, less than 25% of what you pay the outside contractors, they will do the work and it will last. Because if it, if it uh, crumbles tomorrow, we we'll blame them. Then that woman will worry out. So they will do a good job. But we won't do that. So we are saying, when do we begin to think along these lines? Our duty is to help young people to learn enough about their abilities and interests. And the choices and opportunities open to them so that they will become the kind of people they ought to be. They will blossom, they will bloom, they will flourish. Now let me say that this type of educational system we are talking about, it requires also teachers. And it also requires management, policy uh, instruments. Of course, you know that not every teacher, <laughs> I had a, a professor of education many years ago who used to say something. He said, some are teachers, some are cheaters. <laughs> Yes, that's the truth. They are not there to teach, they are really there to cheat. 
and, and they look for the shortest, easiest cut. You are not interested in building the students after you. I tell my students, I want you to be better than me. If I come out tomorrow to a place that is, ah, that was my student, I will feel very happy. I want you to be, be better than me. It's only a very bad father who does not want his son to grow up to his own stature. And we need people who will groom students. That's why here I am postulating that what we need are teachers, successful teachers, who will be number one, a coach. What do I mean? A coach. Uh, so I'm sure some of you are watching World Cup, isn't it? Huh? Yes. After the Brazilian dropping of the past few days, you heard that the coach, Scolari. When uh, Brazil is winning, the man is on top of the world. When Brazil took the worst bashing in their history, the man said, I am responsible. That's a coach. We need teachers who are like coaches. Celebrate with your group. Mourn with your group. Not you are a teacher. You take students for school sat. They come out with 1% pass. And you still ask for promotion. And you wait and collect your benefits. You are not bothered. Of course, if the teachers refuse, if the students refuse to read, that's another thing. Okay, man. Because there are some people who have a title. There are some students who have a title like called NFA, no further ambition. No further ambition. They are called out one for one. <laughs> they don't believe in it one for one. Now, I won't hold you responsible for that. But you make a genuine effort to make your students do well. So we need a coach. When his team is doing well, he's celebrating. When they're not doing well, he's mourning. He's with them. He does not just tell them what to do. He shows them what to do. That's a coach. It doesn't stop there. We also need teachers who are managers. They know how to organize students to accomplish set objectives. At the end of the lecture, you know, I tell people that that's one of the most exciting things about teaching. At the beginning of a session, you start a topic and a, a course. The students are completely illiterate there, ignorant of the, of the course. By the time the year ends, they're arguing with you. They think they know more than you. You have succeeded as a teacher. That's when you have succeeded. You have raised people who know it. Manage them. You should also be a resource person. Let students consult you. Again, I tell my students, stop me anytime, anywhere with your questions, I will stop. And you know students now, if you give them a blank check, they will cash it. They will wait for you anywhere. I'll drive you along. Hey, sir, that thing you said in class. I will laugh. I said, well, I gave you the permission, so go ahead. Be a resource person. If your student has something that is not clear, say, wait, I'll, I'll check this thing up. Read further, come back and give him an answer. A, a successful teacher should also be uh, a motivator. Stimulate them. Arouse their interest so that they themselves will generate their own motivation. And then, of course, a successful teacher will be a counselor. Counsel them. Help them to discover their capabilities and opportunities. Help them also to, you know, through highly personalized and individualized assistance so that they will grow. Let me also say that African traditional educational system has components to help us draw out the best from the young people. Just note a few things about our basic educational system. Have you noticed that the African educational system, the traditional one, has music and dance within it? And that this serves as a cultural vehicle to teach the child quite early in life the beauty of physical activity, teamwork, and group solidarity. Very important. I mentioned that of uh, singing, uh, where we, we use songs to communicate things. My little child learned how the, the, all, the, uh, um, all the books of the Bible, um, Genesis, Exodus, these, this, and they will recite it and get what I can't get because they, com they commit it to song and sing it from Genesis to Revelation. So immediately you give him a task, he will think, I know where that book is. It's also it's a component of our traditional system. We also have emphasis on character development, helping each student to be sociable, 
honest, courageous, humble, persevering, and of good character. There is also emphasis on abstract reasoning and intellectual training. You know, we say in Hebrew land that, uh, how do they put it? That Hindu will manage a yoke. You know that that helps abstract reasoning and your ability to arrive at decision making. There was, I was delivering a paper once at uh, uh, Patonia. It was an AUJ program. And I started with a question. I asked them, I said, man, was driving past in a car and there was only space for one more person in that vehicle. Only one more person. And he came by a bus station and there were three people there. One was an old friend who extended a favor to him a long time ago. And he did not, he had been waiting for an opportunity to return that favor. And there was that man standing there at the camp. But he looked the other side and saw a beautiful damsel. The kind he had prayed for all, always to have this type of person as a wife. And if only he could, if there was space for two in that, there was only space for only one. There was this beautiful damsel. I said, if only he could have this woman. And here she was at the, uh, at the uh, bus station. And the night was creeping in. A very good opportunity to settle with her. And then the third person, an old woman, weak and infirm, shivering in the cold, wanting to get away as quickly as possible. And I asked the people, I said, of the three, which one will you lift? Perhaps I ask you now, if you were the man driving that vehicle, which one will you lift? The old woman. The old woman. Yes. Huh? <laughs> I like that. The man is being honest. He said he's the damsel. What of the friend who did you a good favor? <laughs> you know, any answer you give says something about your values. You are free to give any answer. There's none that's right or wrong. But any answer you give is a commentary on your values and beliefs. If the person who gave the, uh, the puzzle said what he will do is stop the car, get down, and then ask what his good friend to take over the vehicle and the old woman to enter so that he will walk away with the dancer. <laughs> is that our traditional educational system sharpens our reasoning, helps us to think a right. I remember in those days I was thinking, hey, if there are 100 birds in the tree and you shoot at one, boy, how many are there? You say 99, either good in. Because sometimes you shoot up the tree, all the 100 will fly away. So these things taught us about life. That was our system. There was also appreciation of the role of the child as a member of the community, teaching him the importance of community participation and involvement. There was also vocational training and proper job orientation and perpetuating this culture even in our setup. Let me say quickly here that the education we received at DMGS was a wholesome education that prepared us for nation building. Do I talk about the fact that it was an international forum? We had lecturers from across the globe. I'm sure those of uh, my generation remember Mr. Cleaver, who was a, a terror in those days, Saturday morning inspection service. No matter how you polish your dormitory space, Mr. Cleaver will always come and touch it and see some dust. You are in trouble. And once you lose marks for the house, you will carry that head until you become bald. We were taught discipline. Ask them, all of us slept on uh, wooden beds. I remember in those days that when I was in class one, I had a class two student, one year my senior, the son of a minister in Federal Republic of Nigeria, Akpabio. When he was coming, they carried Vono bed and all those things with Madras. 
They were stopped at the gate and told to go back. Everybody in the angel sleeps on a wooden bunk. We were brought to know that we are all equal. Do I talk of the regimentation? 5.30 you wake up. Whether you know how to pray or not, the next 10 minutes have acquired devotion. If you like, kneel down and sleep there. Then after that, you go and do your morning chores. We are prepared for life. Do I talk? There are so many things I could say. You began to relate with people. I met people from across Nigeria. Yorubas were there. Igbos were there. Non houses also. A couple of them. We were raised for nation building. And so when I talk about these things, I talk about the things we were given in the ages and which made a whole lot of difference. I look back and I thank God I went to the MGS. Did you know that in my first year in the MGS, we had uh, 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 hobbies. They called them hobbies. But we were trained. In my first year, I was in a uh, tailoring group. I learned how to sew. Class two, we were in a young farmer's club. Class three, I learned photography. We, were, I, that, we went into the studio to print, to develop, to print photographs. And we learned some of these things. So these were the ways we were raised. And we are saying that if we are going to have young men who will take over from us, who will call the shots, how many more years do I have? A couple more years. And you look for me and you won't find me. And you'll be the people who will make all the difference. Our prayer is that you will not fail when the time comes. One uh, professor, Ono, from UNN, identify what she called the eight intelligences. When I said, no, everybody's intelligent. She said there are eight intelligences. Number one is verbal linguistic intelligence. Re responsible for the reproduction of language. There are people who are very good at that. There is the logical, mathematical intelligence. This one is associated with scientific or deductive reasoning. There is the visual, spatial intelligence, which deals with visual arts. There are some people, if you speak grammar, they will not understand. If you put it to diagram, you will beat everybody. There are those who are what they call bodily kinetic intelligence. The ability to express emotions or ideas using body language. There is musical or rhythmic intelligence. There is interpersonal intelligence, the ability to work in groups. There is intrapersonal intelligence, involving understanding of oneself, feelings and emotions. And there is naturalist intelligence, directly related to the recognition and appreciation of the national world. What we are saying, we say again, Every child, every individual is intelligent, only depending on the intelligence platform from where you can reach that particular person. I now come to conclusion. I'm through. Conclusion. When the Second World War ended in 1945, Japan, a notable world superpower in those days, was left in ruins. The nation's industrial infrastructure the morale of our people and the social structures of past generations smoldered in the ashes of war. In the 1950s, the nation became a byword for inefficiency and poor craftsmanship. I used to say that uh, when we were much younger, there is a, a rapper they used to call occupied. You know, if you, yes, if you give somebody, a, you know, an Ijebu, Rapper, they say, ah, uh, uh, occupy the Google tell me. Once you put it in water and bring it out, you will see the straight bear. What does occupied mean? Occupied Japan. Their products were very poor. Her industrial products were a joke. Her economic prowess was dead rate. Today, barely 50 years after, Japan is the foremost technological and industrial wonder of the developed world. Her management principles, her professional practices, her technological processes, and her sense of purpose and direction have become objects of study for the rest of the world. What is their secret? 
the Japanese never designed structures that are not aimed at solving practical problems on the ground. They have systems that produce results. Simple down to edge systems rooted in their cultural and social practices which address practical problems of the polity. When will we have an educational system like that? What of the Americans? I ask science teachers, the way we teach physics, chemistry, biology, is it the way they teach it in America? And the people go to the moon and come back. And we can't even go to Anisha and come back. Is it the same? Is it the same lesson? What is the difference? Isn't there something we can learn from it? What of the Germans? Twice they were crushed in a world war. Twice they rose up from the ashes of defeat. Today, they are one of the top eight economies of the world. What is their secret? What of Europe? Crum you know, trampled upon by all the superpowers in their battle for supremacy. Today, Europe is a major industrial and technological wonder. What is their secret? We are saying that the debt we owe the Nigerian youths is to fashion out curriculum innovations and creative pedagogy in lecture delivery that will translate into effective nation building. We must build the ethical foundations for our youths, provide them with life skills for gainful employment, and equip them to survive in a seamless and thoroughly globalized world. Anything less will just not do. Thank you for listening. Remind us when the chairman was speaking. He said that today's lecture was going to be a very invaluable game to all the participants. And as if he was uh, prophesying, when the professor came up to speak, was a confirmation of his prophecy that the value of today's lectures, because we are yet to hear more by the resource persons, it cannot be quantified in Naira and Kobe. The professor has spoken like a professor by giving us a world-class quality lecture. Prof, thank you. And when he was speaking, something came to my mind. I wanted to make a request, but just at the point when he ended, that request was already granted that every participant in this very auditorium should have this quality material. The hard copy, as I stand, on your capacity as the Secretary General of GMJ School Boys Association worldwide, and also as the President of DOBA on each branch. First and foremost, I bring salutation from the GEC, especially our PG, DOBA worldwide, in person of SAI Engineer, Gibson KK. I just resumed the new office within the week as the Secretary General. So with fresh innovation, this particular document as a support to encourage the UNICEF chapter, the Secretary is going to produce hard copies, which I know by the organizers the, you have the attendance list of every participant here, so that uh, in a, subsequently the document will be made available to you so that every person will get his or her own copy. You know, um, taking care of the students is the custodian of the 
the, 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 the students' chapter of Doba at Unisi. Thank you so much for your efforts. And my big brother and my classmate and my friend, who is the, uh, the, 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 the branch president of uh, Doba, Oka branch, in person of Obi Okichuku, a chartered accountant. Incidentally, he's a junior colleague to Prof. I thank you for anchoring and taking care of these youngsters. Thank you so much. Long share.
15 to 24 years. That's the age bracket of youth. 15 years to 24 years. Um, the one in the, most of the dictionary says, but it doesn't define, doesn't say it about youth, it says adolescence. And it uses it interchangeably with youth. And it says before adulthood of 13 to 18 years. But I'm going to look at youth in a wider perspective. Wider perspective in the sense that to a large extent, somebody who is in the university, you can be in the university and you are still you are around 22 years. You are still a youth. You are still considered a youth. Even though you are both 18. You can be unemployed. You can still be doing your master's. You can be, even be working. You are under 30 years. For the purposes of the talk, I still consider you a youth. In fact, in certain situations, I still consider myself a youth. So let us look at it in that uh, perspective. Now, there is no, uh, 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 it is, there's no need to overflogging the issue that you need education. Prof has said it, you know, you know repeatedly and he made uh, uh, emphasis, laid a lot of emphasis on that. You need education to build a nation. One, you also need education to contribute quality, to make a quality contribution. If you are not educated, even in your own honor, even within your clan, your kindred, the type of, if you are looking for post, the type of what they will give is progress. But they are members of my people, but that they are That's the type of beauty they will be giving you. If they want to say, let us go and meet the Igwe, let us go to the local government, let us go to House, House of Assembly and I tell them the problems this community, they will never pick you. You, go, you may go there and start fighting. You may go there, you may not even be able to address issues on hand. So that is the essence of the education. The quality, make it improving the quality of the person. Now, because the concept of nation building, you need to be educated. We have to have... Let me, before I go on, do that. It says... In, every, in almost every sphere of life today, be it political, economic, and religious, nation building has almost become rhetoric. There is a claim by people from all quarters that they are building the nation. Unfortunately, the popular usage of the phrase has defied every attempt at a precise definition. Nation building implies complex and interrelated activities consciously directed towards the well-being of people in a given nation or society. It is a commitment to building and developing a nation. Nation building can be in a number of areas, political, economic, social, cultural, educational. Nation building embraces a strong will to make enduring improvements in all facets of a country's life. The duty of nation building must be pointed out is entrusted on everyone. However, the age bracket we get it as youth should have much responsibility in this, this regard. This is so because the youth makes up to 60% of our country's workforce. Now, if we look at the main facets of the Millennium Development Goals, it gives the following rules, the following uh, keys, or areas where it plays emphasis. Uh, number one, eradicate poverty. Number two, achieve universal primary education. Number three, promote gender equality and empower, empower women. Number four, Reduce child mortality goes on and on and on and on. Now, I want to look at factors militating against youth and nation building. These youths, me and you, look at the bracket of 15 to 30. What are those factors that inhibit, that prohibit us, that stop us or constrain the youths from? assisting or lending their own, making their own input in nation building. It comes in two ways. Some of the factors are from the youth themselves. Some of the factors are from the government, yeah, the society itself. Now let us look at the first one, corruption. Uh, Prof has said, uh, made uh, so much uh, emphasis and uh, uh, explanation on the issue of corruption. Now it says, one of the factors that constantly work against youth education in Nigeria 
is corruption. The word corruption is the compendious word. It does not lend itself to a precise interpretation. However, efforts have been made to define the word corruption. A definition, uh, another uh, way that says corruption involves the giving and taking of bribe or illegal acquisition of wealth using resources of public office, including the exercise of discretion. In this regard, it is those who have business to do with the government who are compelled somehow to provide inducement to public officers, officials to make them do what they want to do or to grant them undeserved favors. Now, um, when uh, when uh, the senior Dengra might was speaking, he mentioned uh, a particular name, Elrefai. You see, the report, the, the, we are all Nigerians. We, one of our biggest problems is that we are, we are double-edged. We, 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 we speak for two sides of the mouth. I will first of all go and steal. And the first person that will go to the air, go to the media and start shouting, People, should not, people who still have, have to be prosecuted. Now, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty or the details of how uh, he, the person we are talking of did his own work. But you see that in, 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 in most of the time, people in authority who are the people who commit these blunders. Let me just tell you something though. It is very, very difficult if not almost impossible to convict anybody for any of these corrupt offenses. Anything you see on TV is magic show. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The thing they do on the TV, they'll come and bring the man, parade him, do this one, he'll go home, come back again, they'll put him in chains. And come. It is almost impossible. Why? The AFCC will come up with um, uh, 170 count charge. Have you not been seeing it on papers? 120 count charge. Fine. The papers will blow it bad. Uh, Mr. XYZ, Elijah XYZ has been uh, arraigned in court, Federal High Court, for 170 charges. People will be clapping for AFCC. What are you trying to do? How will you try 170 charges? Where will you start? You, you bring 170 charges. Fine. The man tells you you are welcome. What does he do? He goes and gets five senior advocates of Nigeria. With your money, oh. are you there? Yes. Those five applicants of Nigeria will not will leave the substance. John Wagoni issues on technicality. Does this court in the first place have a right to even arraign me? What, what is the competence of EACC? If they, they know the answer, oh. they know the answer. They know that EFCC has a right to do what they are doing. But they will first of all raise issues. The court will dismiss their motion. They will say, no, 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 we have a right of appeal. Section 220 of the Constitution. What do they do? They will exercise their right of appeal and go upstairs. They will go to court of appeal and waste time and bragado do this one, you know. When you, when you, I was in the Supreme Court on Tuesday. When you see some of them come to court, you have a member, a member, a You come, you have such a matter, and he comes in with about five, seven juniors. I might go to a year week. I might go to a year gown. Who are you doing? You are eating the man's money. You, your money and my money. And then what happens at the end of the day? He, 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 he belabors the court. The court is frustrated. The, by the time you are going on appeal, the trial court will do what? He will ask the trial court to stay proceedings on his trial. I have to go to that side. You go to court of appeal. The court of appeal will dismiss it. You go to Supreme Court. Supreme Court will say one thing after how many years? The matter I went for on Tuesday was adjourned to January 2015, 15th of January. I don't know. <laughs> the matter I went for on Tuesday was adjourned to 15th of January 2015. So in that type of situation, by the time we get to January 2015, they will find another issue and raise. By the time you come back from Supreme Court down, maybe the Supreme Court will finally dismiss it. And then you now come back to the trial court again. You have spent three, four years. Then you start afresh. The court will now say one thing. You say, no, 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 the court is biased. Court, please transfer this matter from this place to this place. Another issue comes up. No, 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 you just think about issues. It's a team. You come up with issues and uh, they go, if you're caught to visit, you go and appeal again. It's all up and down, up and down. So who loses? Is it the person that you are trying? He doesn't lose, it's a game. Just like you said, it's a game. 
So he plays with your money and plays with you. And then by the time you know what is happening, even if he's convicted, by the time he's going, before, there's this man that was convicted, uh, where, somebody was convicted. A person was convicted. You're a convict. You can't go to your house. But somebody was convicted, allowed to go home. What is the time? Allowed to go home and come the next day for, for, for sentencing. In law, we have what you call, you, you convict the person. Then you hear what we call allocutus. After here is a uh, uh, sort of a plea of uh, to reduce reduction in, uh, you know, sentences. Now, the man was convicted by the magistrate court, given time. That's the way he has to go home. What was the essence of that time? For the magistrate to be approached. Then he now came the next day, what did they do to him? They gave him uh, a powerful fine and then he went home, you know, from his back pocket. Paid the fine and then walked away home. So, at the end of the day, you see that it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vicious circle. Now look at uh, the man, I don't want to mention any name, the man who was tried in London. Their system is sharper, is, is more tuned to cut down to all these technicalities. He was tried, he was convicted. Now, somebody now said, why did that man even agree to go? When he had the, when he had the means of refusing to go to London. Because if he had not gone to London, he would never have been convicted. What? you spend your time and you file motion, you file this one, then another one comes in, you file another one, you file a counter motion, you file. People get anything, but lawyer get anything. The lawyer has to eat. So these things are vicious. The, 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 the corruption will never go. Then it also, let us bring it down to our, what we are talking about, educational, educational uh, institutions. From your primary school, to your secondary school, to your tertiary institutions, to whatever. The system is all the same. All the same. When contracts are awarded, like uh, 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 Prof was saying, some of, the, some of the contracts that are awarded, if done by direct labor, if done by direct labor, there was a particular contract we were trying to execute, we were, they were trying to execute them, and then we try to, you know, talk of direct labor. The, the difference in the cost, difference in the cost of direct labor on that contract, on and on what was later approved. I don't want to. Be specific or anything here, but it was it was really alarming. But the system, the system, they tell you due process. What is due process? The system, you know, uh, 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 agrees with such things because you, you, by the time you say okay, sometimes when we want to do some of these things in the faculty of law, say let us go and do it directly. Because if you by the time you go, they say consultancy, contractor will come and put, they will put. By the time you know what's the but this is something you can go directly to the market. This is how much they sell it. Give me, you take it and buy. You put it and you start using it. So the system we are adopt here does not does not uh, 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 corruption. It uh, enhances the, it it uh, it accommodates it very very well. For instance, I don't think I don't think you can even do any contract in Nigeria without arranging. It is not a possibility. I don't know whether I am telling you it is not a possibility because the man that is giving you the job has an interest. The man that is going to pay you as the accountant or the boss has his own interest. So where do you go from there? Now, we are talking of factors that inhibit education as uh, factors militating against youth education and nation building. The second one is eroded value, eroded uh, value system. Another defensive factor militating against youth education and their capacity of, of nation building is the eroded value system in our society. High level of moral decadence is prevalent in our society today. The youth has not fared well in this area. Our youth misplaced their priority, arising mainly from the get money quick syndrome. Value reorientation has become imperative if the youth must occupy their pride of place in the scheme of things in this country. Our youth must change their value system from the nadir of decadence it is today. The high level of decency and antisocial behavior associated with uh, uh, Pro Senior Dengramat has also said that the the value system is uh, is something something else, and uh, what we consider what we consider uh, uh, opposite these days is not what ought to be. Um, you have a situation where let me let me um, you want to live you want to live the life of 
in this in every society you have classes. It is unavoidable. You have classes. Your parents may be a teacher. Some other parents, person's parents may be a senator. The other guy's parents may be a, may be a, 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 a dangote. You don't expect as a teacher. If the man, the dangote son is carrying three phones, three heavyweight phones, you know they are phones and they are phones. That's not the one the DJ was carrying. Not those type of phones, no. <laughs> they are phones and they are phones. You don't expect to leave those ones. Now, if you leave the essence of coming to school and you face or chase shadow. What do you, I mean by shadow? You come, you look at the aesthetics. The primary objective of everybody being here is book group, passing your exams, getting an A, getting a B. Worst case scenario, C. I don't remember failing any course. And I don't see why any student who attends lectures should fail any course. I don't know why I, I mark scripts. Uh, but you see scripts where you want to help you want to, you don't want too many failures in your class. It, because when you uh, students fail too much, it becomes, the lecturer becomes questioned, you know, uh, why, if you thought well, why should this people fail? But, uh, you now say, okay, where do you place your bio on the paper? You look for where to place your bio on the paper. You don't see. You look, you look at the answer of a student that should at least, at the average, is a, a page and a half, two pages. In explaining, because by the time you know law is a story, you know you cite case, you cite uh, you cite uh, sections, you give details, you analyze, you appraise. So you are looking at worst case in only two pages. But a student to come and give you one line. <laughs> now then you give, give you one line. Then somebody will say, okay, now you want to create your data. Say okay, don't worry, don't, don't just, just give me a minute. You now take the scripts, and then you give the person who will help me and mark the script. You remark it for me. The person takes it and he shakes his head. Because you see, why should you, why should, the time we spend on Facebook, Facebook, the time you spend on it, I'm not, I mean, it's a, it's a reality. Facebook, Twitter, can't go on, no? WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp. I hardly have time to answer calls. I hardly have time to, to send me text messages. Text messages in the email. Why? Because there's so much work to be done. That so somebody who spent, you see every two minutes, so he's, he's pinging back. I don't know what I'm talking about. Ping, go back. Somebody who have 650, 700 friends on Facebook. How do you coordinate? It's today. Now, what are you doing with them? No, no, no. I'm, I'm busy. What are you going to be talking with them? How can you be coordinating? Why you going to pass? Because sometimes you tell lies. You go to Oyenga, you left. You go to Oyenga, right? So you can hear me on your America. It's in America, not yesterday. So because it's in London. Because I'm just, I'm just arriving from Germany. How do you remember what you coded last? Ah, that because I'm going to, I'm going to, the, 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 I'm going to get the mental. So now that is the eroding value system. Now the third one is high cost of education. That is uh, implicit. Uh, schools. It's not easy to. Keep yourself in schools, that is given. Uh, some schools, school fees. Uh, Lagos had a situation last week, you know, the, an example, just giving an example, they increased astronomically and then they were right around that. All hands are not equal. You know, Alan Passage University recently increased to 170,000. There was so much noise and all that. But you see that, that 170,000, that 170,000 naira, Unisic pays 20 guineas. 20 something, it depends on the department. Some people cannot afford 20 something. Some people cannot afford 20 something. I ha I've had the cost to pay some school fees of you know, serious students some, time, some years. Why? Because I see that it's serious, or she's serious, but she ca genuinely cannot afford, you know. So that is the, that's the very straightforward one, and uh, it goes for the government. Then, enabling environment. Under enabling environment, high cost of education, that is, has already been taken. Then, two. High expectation for the society. Once you become a graduate, your parents, brothers, sisters, church, the church, the homeowner, and the state relations even expect you to pick up bills. You think it's an easy thing. Once you leave this place, those brothers and uncles you used to call for an phone, nah, Hawaii, Google. Nobody will answer you reasonably again. 
Your even the younger ones will be expecting you to give them. The worst, the worst is when you become when you are reading a professional course. I can't again barista, barista. Any occasion you are going to, you will come and they will put, bring you to one high table. If we can win in our way, they may come to the past two months. It won't be for agreement to find your kid there. You know, when, when you are telling students this thing, they think it's, they think it's a joke. When you are fresh out of school, especially a professional course, who is going to give you a case? Case I can't me to go into the police out again, one thing will get you back in my hand. No, that's, the, that's, that's what you get because if he, 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 he's afraid if he gives you a serious matter, you go and mess it up. That's the truth. He can't give you anything serious. So you have to start from somewhere. He took the police and said, okay, uh, this tenant has refused to pay me. Go and recover my premises. If you succeed in chasing the tenant after, after some time, I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Before he, you can get his trust and confidence, it will take you like, and confidence of so many people, it will take you like three, four, five years before you start talking about getting any reasonable brief for somebody. Who is going to give you any reasonable high court matter as a fresh graduate? I call that guy. He will all them all. <laughs> you think it's a joke? So, the basic truth is <laughs> when you are in school, you are just learning, and the law, something like a, a law, even in medicine, you don't, you don't, uh, you cannot, three quarter of what you should know as a lawyer, you can't learn it inside the school. You get to law school, you cannot even learn with three quarter. You learn it in the field. If you are a lawyer and you finish your practice, you finish your training and you go to the bank, work in the bank, you are still empty. When you hear one. And you're just passing files. You're just passing files and uh, you end up not the practical aspect. Of it. So the expectation for the society is so high. When you are graduate, you are graduating. Even if you are going to do for you are going to do lesson, lesson. You may not mark a lesson. You may have one, two, three. You may get money. Men go to the men Saturday morning. Men get Friday, get Saturday evening. Make a Sunday. You are still working. They regard you as you are doing something. Then the society does not help matter. When you not, you, first of all, you come to your, your, your age grade, they give you a levy. You come to your mother, they give you a levy. You come to the church, they give you a levy. You come to your family again, your mom naturally, your dad naturally, if they are not well off, expects you to contribute reasonably to your lady. You cannot be doing this and then you, they are still feeding you. Once you are out of school, you are out of school. Nobody knows you are on your own. Now, number three, on that, we are still talking about an enabling environment. There's lack of government encouragement. Lack of government encouragement it means uh, you talk of uh, giving scholarships to indigenous students or, you know, uh, uh, qualified students. There are students that are bright. Some of our colleagues, some of our uh, uh, older old boys, like my dad, he read with scholarship. Without scholarship, he would, not have, uh, gone, gone, he would not have gone to school at all. So, even if you come out of school, there are provisions where the government ought to arrange interest-free loans. These are enabling environments. That will, these are empowerment, youth empowerment. Interest-free loans for you to engage in one entrepreneurship uh, 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 thing or the other. Now, the other one is uh, that youths are not accommodated in the scheme of things. In your confab, there's a confab going on. You know what is confab? Fine, it is going on now. How many youths are there? They are planning for your tomorrow. They said you are, you are the, the youth of tomorrow. How many youths are there? How many of them there know how to operate a system, operate a computer or a laptop? You, what you see there is ex-governor, ex-minister. There's one particular fellow I saw there the other day, I was shouting, there they go. He is in every government available. Ex-governors, ex-ministers, ex-senators, ex-members of house, ex-this and ex-that. So, what you are planning for the future of these youths, you want them, you said that they are going to lead tomorrow, just as our senior Degema said, that when are they we going to be given the opportunity to come in, to come on board? Now, you want also look at this, this area of when political appointments are made, when offices, you know, electoral offices are given, you have provisions for special assistance, personal assistance. Being a personal assistant is, personal assistant or special assistant with regards to the particular duties, your duties of the office. 
if you're a senator, your special assistants ought to be assisting you, bringing up bills, seeming information from the society. The people you are representing are supposed to bring you information, seeming these things, preparing you, the senator, eh, for deliberation, telling you when you should go. But what do they use this special assistance for? Eh? What is your guess? What do they use them for? Eh? Go and, uh, uh, when I like to go, go give you money for this thing, go and collect the money. Go to my site at uh, my Tama, uh, ask, the, ask the contractor what he's doing there. Go down to use it themselves and bring uh, three girls there for me. Am I not saying what is happening? No. Oh. So, it, it, but if you are, uh, if you, if they are incorporated in the scheme of things, like this conference, you have a, a, a provision for youth. They come up and say their minds, look at the way we are heading, look at what we, what we want. These things are documented. Let me just tell you, this is history being made. That the comfort they are doing there. It is, constitutionally, it is merely advisory. But the president, the executive, can based on that do so many things. And by doing that, he already has a backing. Constitutionally, they have, there's no provision for that in the constitution. That's constitutional comfort. But, when the scheme of things are, are being done, if you, are, if you want to do something, you have to have a foundation. If the president wants to say, let me now create states, that is the foundation he will rest on. If he wants to say, let me do this for the youth, whatever that they do there is the foundation he will, he, will, he will rest on. So there is no basis. The youth are not accommodated in the scheme of things, and there is no uproar, there is no noise to that effect. Now, let us look at again the fifth one, lack of focus. The issue of, uh, issue of uh, you come to school, you, you look at the trader, a chair in cash and a chair in a back pocket, you think that is, the, that is the sole savings. You may think that, that is the end, and uh, you end up uh, losing focus on the education you came for. You look at the politician, he has so much money, you see, I can't do it. 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 There's one thing I, I, I noticed when I was in youth service. I served at uh, a learning. A boy I was quoting, a youth copper, my colleague I was quoting. He read the uh, philosophy. As at the time we were in a learning, he was quoting in my house. He couldn't, he was from his youth NYC allowance, sending money to his parents, to his old mom. He never bought anything in that room. The only iron that was in that room was my own iron. Now, the day he, bought, he was able to buy an iron, he sent it down to Ibado. I said, oh, my friend, it appears you think I'm a very stupid person. Everything in this house you use, you one single iron he to the he sent there back to Ibado. <laughs> now, I learned something from that boy. Before we, before we finished NYSE, he had bought master's form. <laughs> By the time we started practicing in Lagos, he was already completing his master's. By the time I was about four years in the, he had done his master's, he had done professional courses and he was doing his PhD. By the time I now remember that I had to do my master's and PhD, he was already a doctorate degree holder. What am I saying? You go to an interview, mainly from this side, you might tell Lagos is also. Even this one we are doing now, four years ago, I can manage to say We are in a hurry. Now, the average Yoruba man, Packages himself. What, what does he do? Every available program within his domain. Okay, mention here now. You now carry your BSc, chemical engineering or BSc, accountancy or LLB BL. When he's coming for that interview, for if you have for EG LLB BL, <laughs> you are welcome. He's coming with LLB BL, member instead of chapter secretaries. Member, uh, Nigerian uh, Institute of Management. Member this, member that. He has, a, he has an LLM, he has an MBA. So, in the Qatar, it's in the Qatar here. He didn't think he had the interview. He said, okay, I'm going to the university. I'm going to take my, I'll come, I will come next week. You run because you have looked at the program, you have looked at yourself. You are, you know, you know where it fits in. Why? Because you, 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 you know, they make out time. Why I gave you the example of that boy is that the boy barely eats. He barely eats. He said, he can imagine NYC then. I would know I was the bourgeois, I was the bourgeois couple. I was making money from so many, so many places. I was practicing, I was uh, 
paid by the university. I was lecturing in the University of Illinois. I was paid. I was, you know, but he himself was a, was was barely managing from the NYC allowance and then the little money he was getting from the place he was teaching. He would divide that money into two, send one to his mother. In that poverty, if you the day I went to his house, in that poverty, this small house, or the Afuna film in Yoruba, African magic in Yoruba. In that poverty, he did his he did his doctorate. On that five six years, we left we left NYC camp. But here, what do we want? I want to have BSc. If I BSc on on Ekuhu, that I've achieved the highest. You have not done anything. When you go to the other side of the divide, you go to the Western world. Somebody will be doing masters, no matter what it is, even if it's working. People, you like that's why you like wrong you like wrong programs for people, and some of them come very close. They do it late, late into the night to accommodate workers. Still, people punish themselves to get what they want. That is being focused. Now, social network, I've talked, I've talked about that. Social network and media, your, your WhatsApp, your Twitter, your, your Facebook, you leave Facebook and face your book. <laughs> Number seven, for courtism. We don't need to overemphasize that. Uh, uh, pali Pali, I follow. Uh, me, me, hard man. That man these days is not a... Uh, how many people will stop? Oh, cash, can they go to need you? What have you achieved? They were in my first class. Oh, now, hard man. You were a tough guy. Can you figure all your results? In the of those days, when you say you have credits, and when it's credits, say, what can I do with metro? You say, never have metro, can I get credits? You have a book, how many alphas you got? How many A's? That's the truth, how many A's? If you go to what we used to do, that because as a second second term, our course online in DNDS is true. We are ready for work. I practically got my papers in class the first term of class four, first term of class five because I registered GC. On one, I go no six years. I want go five years. So I registered GC in November, November, December. That's the exam will be taking first term of class five. Now, but that doesn't stop. That doesn't stop us because. If you go to the central library then, if you every day, from that second term, every day we will come there by 5 o'clock, 5.30 to the book tally. That tally, you come back around 8, when the library will now be open. I'm, you know, Kita can I go now, where can I go? Kita was the special center. To get your papers, you have to go to the special center. To get them, you have to go to the special center. So, if, if you now come to an exam, you say they hear a criminal law, what, what, what is this? Or they make a... Uh, please, uh, uh, I was sick during the course. When I was uh, done the course, oh, you back had no man. When I was did the course, uh, I was uh, sick by then. That time, uh -huh. therefore, so therefore, please uh, help me. Mother of perpetual mercy will now help you. <laughs> Am I saying something? Else? I will now go through the course and the, the marking scheme. Into a bed, the mother, mother of perpetual mercy. I got my phone over there, my mother of perpetual mercy, no, so I'm marking scheme. Uh, so you mark what you see. Uh -huh. so, so, now, uh, courtism and uh, greed and covetousness, you look at your neighbor, you want to be, and then peer groups. Now, I'm, don't worry, I'm running up. Uh, peer groups, you are easily negatively influenced by peer groups. There was a matter I had at, uh, at uh, Abuja then. It took me, the matter kept me, in two minutes I'll be done, don't worry. It kept me going to Abuja, you know, almost on the, two times a week by flight. Now, in, in one week, I went to Abuja by flight three times. Now, in two of the occasions, I met a student of mine. On the flight, a small girl. That girl cannot be less than, cannot be more than 19 years. Very fine girl. There were two of them. Now, and I looked for that. I saw another lady, you know, if you know I'm a before, before, man. I think I'm going to go, hey, Jay, tell you, go on her. So, when the flight stopped, you know, we stopped at Abuja Airport. The lady first of all stepped down and beckoned at them, you know, gave them a sign. They followed her, the two girls. When I have a plane, but not go again, that same girl. After two days, we came back again. Same flight. Next go again, meet the girl again. You see, I. Can 
say this is everything I'm just saying now. I ain't not knock And when my uncle, this is my uncle, the mogo, on a on a house uh, as assembly, can can. But you know, as an OGM, OGM, OGM man on the on the on the on the street. <laughs> as an old guy, as an old guy, as an old guy, man in the rain. You see that they were being pimped. You know what I mean by pimping? Yes, yes. I want to check. I want to check in a client of mine who came from Lagos on an occasion at Marble Act. I came into, stepped into Marble Act reception, went straight to the reception. I saw one of my students. I was a guy who lost students. He was a from my the management sciences. Then I was teaching them. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, because I had harassed her before. Uh, yes. So she immediately she saw me or move. As I don't see a guy, I'm going to hold the baby. Popo. Make good your man here. Now, my, my, my client now said she was making strenuous efforts to avoid, you know, uh, me seeing her. I had already seen her. And I knew there were about not less than 20 girls. That's their private business, so. But they are talking of, we are talking of, on the topic youth in the Ibochi or in the nation building. That is their private business. So. There were about 20 girls. What were they there for? There was a, a PDP convention. PDP convention. One lawyer from Onitsha, I don't want to mention his name, is a friend. He had been given an assignment to recruit girls to keep this man, PDP man, where he should draw her in Abba. <laughs> <laughs> When I say beep, so what the man was just doing is, hey, take her to the 202. One guy, then I want to want to like the brief. <laughs> so, so, what I mean by beeping is, there are some highly placed individuals in Abu Dhabi who pay dearly. Who can give as much as 250, 300 for one weekend? After I went down, I broke one on my tama. Three million per year. Yeah, we bring in three million per year. One of one on a flat in my time. I finish the place. Jee, I'm not enough. Yeah, because that's his moment. So paying her, you know, two fifty three just for come and spend the weekend. We, you know, talk. But then we get all not the bike. We will send there. So these are one part of the things is that. If you are giving a script, if you are giving a an exam paper, okay, sir. But we didn't do all these ones now. Where do you live? How can we? I know where my friend came in and came on a Abuja hotel for on a flight. We're not going to have a cab every day. Let me conclude. Nigeria, Nigeria, they really, really needs to address these issues. Can vast approve. Education is an indispensable tool for youth to to become tomorrow's leaders. The Nigeria youth of today, today of sorry, the Nigeria youth and today's government must rise to the occasion by doing the following. Number one, increase funding, increase the funding of the educational sector. Two, monitor the budget and monetary monies appropriated for educational sector. You know some of these monies will be will be will be uh, appropriated, but it's what we call budget monitoring. For instance, the the man at Abuja at the police headquarters, he releases money for police uniforms. He releases money for 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 cars, police vehicles, mobile units, walkie talkies. But this money, this money don't get across, doesn't they make some of them don't even come down to the states. You now see police uh, if you have a they down and up because the funding does not come down. I found the book around me, take a cover. There's a particular fellow, a policeman was on duty. An old inspector. He was on duty and uh, somewhere at uh, the opposite, you know, at uh, this expressway and uh, one of the fellows, younger boys who were on duty with him, they saw they had arm robbers, arm robbers, you know, their bullets. And then what did they do? They took over in the gutter, this big gutter in, in, in between the expressway. They took over. So the, the young man who is a private, small worker will offer him, I got to be in the Not even though he, he, he take a cover. How about that? He wear them, wear them, wear them. He put on the never hand. And uh, these are some of the arm robbers. So you know what I'm about to be listen. What did the young man do? He started cocking his gun. Quaka, 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 quaka. 
or see how many if I hear that quack quack for yet, I'm go first year. You want? So now, number three, create jobs for the youth. Number four, make interest-free loans available for youth who want to commence their own businesses. Number four, sponsor counseling and awareness programs for youth. Five, grant scholarships to deserving and indigent youth students. Number seven. The youth should be, should be focused and prepare themselves for the challenges ahead in nation building. If the government at all levels address these issues can vast above the incidence of robbery, kidnapping, insurgence will be drastically reduced. Not <laughs> spared. Committee on Judiciary. Now, what will the aspect of judiciary? Would you blue chief judge or join up and correction each of were highly enriched? <coughs> when he was speaking, I thought about something. Pickery and plantain chiefs. He said something about packaging. When I have a look about plantain chiefs, they can any idea in a shop right or airport, model, a lounge for the airport. These two things were made from plantain. And do plantain actually. He said something about packaging. So it then means that you can package yourself as pecari. You can still package yourself as plantain chips. Depending on you join on the level, you join on a airport or shop right. You know, these days people don't shop wrong, you shop right. Now, I got on the next item, and if you look at the next item, you see refreshment. In my Bible, a man shall not live by bread alone. I know the same Jesus who said, "When a man shall not live by bread alone, they do the matter." They are like a preach, like a, and like a talk. You have a person who wants to go out in the air and we eat something. And we will five loaves and two fishes. We will feed here many people. Which means, apart from the word, again, we have some physical substance. Sorry, but we have So, refreshment to the impact that this program, having loaded us with a lot of intellectual knowledge, can we have some, you know, liquid. So, in doing so, I want us to have a special group of thanks here. You know, as in our youth leaders of tomorrow, but I want to disagree. A lot of things where you know politicians, they hate the politicians. They are not the right forum they do it. But when they are senior, when we give them four corridors, main block to sweep and scrub. So I won't say anything. The youth are, are, for me, the youth are custodians of today's leadership. They are not leaders of tomorrow. I was in the House of Assembly at the age of 30. And when I went to the House of Assembly, I was vibrant. I was, I was a, a one of the factors made it in the House of Assembly. I wasn't looking at my age. The least person who had one altercation there in 50 something years. So it depends on you. Are, if you have the right, you have the power, you have everything it takes to bring a change that you want. You have to be in it. As that the ant that eats the vegetable must live within the vegetable. That was why we went into the house. In fact, when he was talking about personal assistance, I looked at my life. The first job, he made me in a school, but that. In a youth service, but that. The first job I had was 
personal assistant to the chairman of the channel local government. He do has made him application for a job. He didn't run test for any job. So I was personal assistant to the chairman of the local government, and I was given the opportunity of growing no, I was adding value to what the chairman was doing. I was adding value. And the reason which I had the value, Buna, I had this kind of lectures several times in my school days. I was always writing, keeping down notes, planning my life. Now I was it to and now, after personal assistant to the chairman of the local government, I became special assistant to the speaker. I was special assistant to the speaker of the House of Assembly for, I think, one year plus election, based in 2006, December, in the primaries, PDP. I was in PDP then. And the speaker said, you have done well serving me. I want you to, you are the only person I see that can take after me. And he gave me support, a more than 50,000 on my account, which is the election. But in 2007, by one word or the other, we declared winner.
did him at least nothing less than six months' notice. But he's here, humble, seated. Now we give him a round of applause. And for the youth, I always feel excited any time I have the opportunity of interacting with the youth. I'm not ashamed to say it. This thing they call peer group pressure, it almost destroyed me. It almost. But because I was privileged to have a mother who followed me bumper to bumper, that is why I'm where I am today. I thank God for you people. I always tell my children, my, my, one of my children, one of my son, my, my son graduated here, he's waiting for his youth service, he met second class papa in his discipline. I told him that anything less than 2-1, you'll be on your own. <laughs> because we are in a competitive world. Yeah, yeah. And for you to be there, you must have, you must add value to your lives. Yes, yes, there is this, this, uh, this, this poem I like too much, long fellow. He says that, and I quote, the high by great men written and kept, we are not by sudden flight achieved, but they, when their compatriots were asleep, we are toiling upwards in the night. You must turn upwards to be where God wants you to be. And for you to be where God wants you to be, you must have the three Ds in life. Dedication, discipline, and determination. If you don't have it, you are nowhere. You must be disciplined, you must be determined, and you must be dedicated. I thank God for this uh, privilege of being here. I was making notes, but I stopped making notes. The government, I learned that uh, they are going to send these things. Because learning is a continuous process. The moment you, start, you stop learning, you start deteriorating. And that is why, virtually in all courses, they now have a mandatory professional development program for all the courses. Because you can never know it all. I've learned so much, and I'm sure that our students here have also learned so much. And I want to, I want to uh, uh, ask the leadership of Doba Students Wing Oka Branch, make this thing an annual event. And as much as possible, interact with your staff advisor. I, personally, outside being the president of Oka, Dr. Oka Branch, I will want to be giving annual assistance for this type of thing. We need to be giving it a wider and wider and wider and wider advance. I want to thank everybody here, especially the people on the high table, for finding time to come and impact on this uh, student's life. I tell you, what you have done for them today, you cannot quantify it. You have, you have sown into their lives, and it's my prayer that God will sow into your lives in Jesus' name. And make a little more come that way. Now, you see, you hear me in any contribution, in one way or the other, the students, the people on the high table, my prayer is that God, in His infinite mercy, will uh, bless all of us. The chairman, the members of the high table, I want to start on um, all existing protocols to public to go short speech. We end up working for people. The tutus, do you know what they do? They leave school and they strive so hard to make sure they don't fail or people don't see them as failures. So you see them ending up creating jobs for two ones. What I am telling you is the reality. And why? It's because of uh, the academic culture which we've cultivated in our country. So I speak for the youths. Things need to be changed. Patents need to be reestablished. Because there are students that are more of researchers than uh, 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 laureate men. There are students that have working brains and working formulas to make things work. But when you Bring out these your ideas, man, tomorrow, somebody that has millions will snatch it away from you and you are gone. So patents should be reestablished. This is what South African government are doing right now. If you have an idea and you bring it to the government, they patent it so that you will make everything you want in life with that thing. It is very important. So I think I'm speaking for the youths and uh, I want you people to put it into account. When you get back, please try as much as you can to make sure that these things are being impacted. For my colleagues, be least assured that you're on the right path. 
Be least assured that you are going to make it. Be least assured that you mustn't work. It is not a must that you work for people in your life. Some of you can create jobs. Take off that mentality of leaving school and applying for jobs. If eventually you leave school and you see yourself maybe applying for one job or the other, yes, probably it's your case. But there are people here that God has made to create jobs for others. And it's going to be like that. So I humbly say a very big thank you for coming to this event. Um, from my very little establishment, I have brought a very small envelope too for you. And I also hope, like I always say, that when I get a good job, probably I can bring big envelopes. But this is what I have made from being an entrepreneur because I'm enjoying being an entrepreneur. Thank you very much. Yes, they have said it all. They have really, 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 really. If you guys really got what they have all told us, and also mind the kind of people you follow, because your association, your association determines your acceleration. And permit me also to let you know that you can never fe feature in a picture that you never in a feature that you never picture. So always work on yourself. I believe all of us are really going to make it, I must tell you. Yes, obviously, our lecturer, guest lecturers, they have said it all.